We're going to get started now. We were waiting for one more person, so we're at 12. <laughs> oh, good, so oh, good. Lucky 12 dozen, <laughs> fabulous dozen folks here tonight. Um, thank you again for coming to our, this is actually our fifth workshop this uh, year at the Center for Economic Education at Miami-Dade College. We're housed at Inter-American Campus. And as I mentioned earlier, our featured presenter is Dr. Bill Bothart from Florida Atlantic University. And he's going to be sharing with you all he knows about economics of trade and China. He's done this workshop a few times, so he has some fun activities for you. And it's going to be a very engaging afternoon. Um, if you need any more water or snacks, they're in the back. And we promise there will be hot dinner at 5.30. I know you just got here, so I didn't get a chance to say that earlier. Um, so please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Bothart. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, I'm glad you could make it here today. Um, uh, we're going to do a lot about trade. And you know, I tell you, as an economic educator, I, you know, I have to say, I didn't think I had to have a workshop on trade. I, I thought we were all pretty much in agreement that trade was kind of a good thing. Uh, but with recent uh, events, it seems like I have to run a series of workshops, once again, kind of talking about the benefits of trade and also some of the, the, the issues that we have with, with trade as well. And so uh, with this workshop, we're going to be introducing a lot of different activities and discussion about uh, international trade. Um, in terms of what we do with the workshop, uh, we're going to do a lot of activities. Uh, I, you're going to be doing the activities. Um, people always wonder, well, why do we do the activities for adults? Um, there's two reasons. Number one, well, we can still sort of learn a little bit from, from the activity. Uh, but number two, I want you to see the activity so that uh, if you decide to do it in your classrooms, you know how to do it. And also, you'll probably think of better ways of, of, of doing it, right? You'll say, okay, he did it this way, but I'm going to modify it and do it this way in my class. Um, or you will, still, you, you will see me botch it big time, right? I'll totally blow the activity. It's been known to happen, right? You forget to, to make a certain uh, instruction or something like that. And we will we'll just learn from that as well. So you'll get to see some, some, some botches, and we'll fix them, and then we'll move on and then some. Um, so the, uh, the fun thing about trade is that there are a lot of activities for uh, international trade uh, that we can do. Uh, and so I will start out with just the, the first one, uh, which is a simple game called the Grab Bait Game. And so I'm going to give you guys uh, a treat. Although I guess we already had treats over there. But even more treats, right? We're going to do some treats. Um, so I'm going to give you a bag. There's going to be something in the bag. You can look in the bag. Um, don't share right away uh, with your neighbors what's, what's in your bag. Uh, and the bags are going to be labeled with uh, countries, right? So uh, Belgium, uh, France, and like Germany. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to each a bag. So Germany. Germany. And I'll try to put countries geographically close to each other. Uh, Belgium. France. France. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of nice that we uh, have 12. It's a good number. Okay. Mexico, Mexico, your partner is going to be over here. Okay. Uh, Canada. Canada. And it wouldn't be a U.S. centric workshop unless we had the bags for the U.S. as well, right? So, okay, there we go. The United States. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is, I always like this, when we have uh, yeah, the Excel spreadsheet makes my life easier, I don't have to do math. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to look in the bag, um, and I want you to decide how happy you are with the contents of the bag. <laughs> I want you to think of a number between 1 and 10, with 1 being I don't like this at all. Uh, 10 being like, oh, this is, I'm euphoric over, over what's in this bag, right? This is really a wonderful thing. Now, even, it, it, but I will give you a little warning here, right? Because you don't know what's all out there, right? Uh, you probably don't necessarily want to say 10 right off the bat. Because you don't know. There might be other things out there that might make you happier. But with that one restriction, somewhere between 1 and 10, uh, give me an idea of how happy you are. Uh, with what's in your bag. So for the first time around, I'm just going to 
go around the room, and hopefully in the same order, right? Um, but just for this first round, just give me your first initial, right, A, B, C, whatever, and then how happy you are. And, uh, and then I will record them in our spreadsheet so we can keep track of these things round by round. M, five. M, five. R, nine. Uh, R, Still a five. Still a five. That's five. R. Uh, 
I'm still a nine. Yeah, okay. Uh, M? I'm still a three. Still a three. Okay. Uh, e? Five. Okay. Uh, three. Three still. A, a little uh, bit up, up, up one, yeah. A little, a little bit. Okay, you made a trade, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Wow. Still a three. Still a nine. Well, no, three. 
Agree, agree. See if we can make you happy next round. Right. Okay, fine. I can tell. I can Did tell. you trade? Um, yeah, but I couldn't get no M&M. Can I go like three point five? They're on a different continent, right? Yeah. Can I go with three point five? Uh, no. <laughs> I get put a four. <laughs> four. <laughs> Give me a four. Yeah. Okay.
gets a little bit better with international trade. Uh, but we still got uh, uh, better off. We had a couple people go down in the last round, right? So, so getting frustrated with international trade. But each round, we see slow progression. And generally, right, people are made better off with trade. And uh, from the beginning to end, is there anybody who got worse off from the very beginning to the very end? 5 to 9, 9 to 10, 3 to 3, not worse off. 5 to 5, 2 to 5. Oh, okay. L, who's L? Yeah, 8 to 5. He got dis discouraged by it. Uh, 6 to 10, 5 to 5, 7 to 9, 10 to 10. 10. For the vast majority of people, right? Trade made people you know, better off, right? And objectively, are you really worse off? I mean, you had the same amount of candy, right? The same candy. So um, you just became a little bit more discouraged, perhaps. And uh, that's maybe a part of international trade, too, though, right? Is that when people start to see what else in the world there is, I mean, you might get a little dissatisfied with what you have. Um, so moral of the story here, or why we start off this game, uh, is to uh, demonstrate gains from trade, right? Is that when countries trade, people can get what they want. Um, it also talks about value of things. Um, <laughs> what was the least desirable candy in, in all the countries here? The gummy bears. Well, the, the, this, they're not gummy bears. They're Swedish fishes. <laughs> oh, there was, there was, there was gummy bears, too. You're insulting. It's one of my favorite candies. You can't call it a Swedish fish. Swedish fish seemed to be very unpopular because he could not get rid of his Swedish fish. Nobody seemed to want some of them. Um, <laughs> Uh, what seemed to be the most valuable piece of candy? Oh, the Kit Kat bars? Yeah. Oh, wow. Or Almond Joys, right? Oh, okay, Almond Joys, okay. Um, and the m &Ms. The chocolate tends to be the, the more popular thing. Um, did anybody trade like two for one? Did that happen? I mean, it may not have. Anybody keep treated that? Did all the bags have two units in each bag in the beginning or not? Uh, anybody have, did I throw three in one? Oh, he only, oh. I got three. You had three. So and you have to just for to learn to play the game or to do it right. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so some people have three. Okay, and this is also another point to make. So you only had one. Were you still made better off with trade? Yeah, because I traded twice to get the gummy bears. To get the gummy bears. Okay. So people with and you were made better off, right? Yeah. With trade. So people who started out with a lot, three pieces of candy, were made better off by trade. People who didn't have as much just one piece of candy, we're still able to trade and make themselves better off. So trade isn't necessarily a rich person's game or a poor person's game. Everybody can make themselves better off by, by free trade. And so that's another point you want, want to make. Um, yeah. So now, generally those are sort of the rules and things. Um, you'll, there, you'll, now, and by the way, um, you, know, you will get at the end of the workshop, right? Uh, Swedish, Swedish fish for everybody, <laughs> as much as you want. Uh, um, yeah, you will get a binder with all the lessons, right? Um, now, um, I don't always uh, follow the lessons word by word. Um, I give you as close an approximation, but I, you know, for this one, I, I, I make changes. Like in this in this thing, I don't think they necessarily they don't necessarily have countries. I like to do countries. Sometimes you know people just number a bag one one two two or whatever. I like to do it with countries. Um, I also like I, I, I also can sometimes you can do it with kids right uh, do more challenging countries uh, in the sense that you can do Liechtenstein and see if they know where Liechtenstein is or up, uh, well Burkina Faso see if they know where Burkina Faso is and which and when you say intercontinental trade they go look at you like well I don't know who I can trade with um, so you can trade a little you can teach a little geography with it as well um, how to how to play the game um, okay first things first you can. So usually what I do, I get one of those, you probably recognize, I get one of those big Costco bags with all the different sorts of assortments of candies. Um, you, know, you can, and it will work, you can just randomly throw candies in the bag. It will work because people are only going to trade generally when it makes them better off. And the numbers almost always go up. And in particular, in that last round, usually they, they do more than that, right? Um, so no matter what, you can get the results, <coughs> but to emphasize certain things, like for example, within your within your country, did you find it was hard to trade within your country? Yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah. Why? Selfish. Well, she's selfish, <laughs> but how about the, the contents of the bag? Well, it was almost the same, same content. It was almost the same thing, yeah. right? Well, right. that's the thing with trade, right? Is that within your own country, everybody produces pretty much what you produce in that country. There isn't much to be gained because everybody has the same kind of stuff. Where do you get gains from trade is when you trade with somebody who has things that are different than outside or different. Okay, so when I set up the bags, what I usually do is this, is, uh, you know, I had three continents, we didn't, we didn't have enough, but I only had two continents uh, today. I usually have three continents, um, and usually I have the chocolate continent. That is usually Europe, just because in my mind, chocolate Europe, okay. Then I usually have the gummy continent, right, and I think you guys had the gummies out there, some gummy continents. And then I have the hard, hard, hard candy continents, and those would be the, the, the suckers and the sweet tarts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I divide my candy into those three types, and then I go ahead and put those candies in the different countries. Um, and I often try to say, like, I get, like, peanut M&Ms, and I'll put peanut M&Ms in all the Belgian bags. I didn't do it maybe this time, but in, I think, one of the countries, I don't know if it got out there. But then they realized, well, we all have the same thing. We cannot absolutely trade because everybody in Belgium has peanut m &Ms. So I usually do that for one of the countries just to sort of drive that home. And usually then when I ask, did you find it hard to trade with somebody in your country, they'll say, once they'll all raise their hand and say, everybody has the same tech thing. Right. And so, so that drives home that lesson. Um, so that's how I usually do it. And that way, you know, it makes that last round in particular, more likely to increase people's happiness as they finally get access to the chocolate. And yes, believe it or not, people do give up chocolate because some people do like gummy bears and, and gummy things or uh, sweet tarts or, or whatever. Um, and so usually you see the, that, that, that surge in place. So that's how I set up the bags. Um, but like I said, if you don't want to think too much about it or press for time, you can just randomly distribute that, that will work as well. Yeah. Question. Uh, I was thinking of something that you just said right now, and we've concentrated on candies. Could it, the game work also if I put, for example, in some countries candies, another country, let's say a yo-yo, yep. another country, something even more expensive or sophisticated? More yeah, sophisticated. We, we, we did that at Foundations for Teaching uh, okay. and Economics yes. last well, summer. Sure. With the economics and Yep. They have a, a bunch they of have crazy a stuff. Well, they have crazy <laughs> stuff here. So you can put in different things. Um, yes. Uh, they have to be somewhat tradable, right? Because, uh, you know, if you just have like a small piece of candy and you have like a laptop computer in another bag, oh, I mean, yeah, 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 that's yeah. not going to work yet. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, yeah. Um, now, I, but I also want to address another version of the game. Which not expensive, just crazy. Well, then that's yeah. just crazy, yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing. It is, you know, the cost. So you say, okay, I don't, you know, it's like, because it, it'll run you, whatever, the $15 to get that bag at 200 and if you got multiple classes, you'll, you'll need a fair number of candies. Um, so you might get two bags, so that's probably worth that. Probably work enough. Um, so about three, 400 pieces of candy. Um, so you say, oh, man, you know, candy, I don't, don't want, I don't want to get the candy. Here's what my... Uh, my assistant director up at uh, FAU is uh, Brett Berkey. He teaches at Dreyfus School of the Arts in West Palm Beach. Um, what he does is the following. He went to um, like a, you know, a grocery store and, or wherever, you know, and where they have all the gift cards. And he asked his store manager before he did this, otherwise it looked very But he just grabbed gift cards from different places for the same denomination. Right, you know, so ten dollars from Target, ten dollars from uh, the TGI Fridays, ten dollars from the Gap, ten dollars from whatever. So and so he got a variety of places, and and so instead of you know putting candies in the bag, he puts these uncharged gift cards, right? And 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 asks the kids to imagine, right? You know, you have this card. What would you trade it for, right? And you know, even though they are the same dollar denomination, of course. There's preferences, right? Because I would I would trade away my you know ten dollars of, of, of McDonald's uh, stuff for uh, ten dollars at the Gap, and somebody may not want clothing at the Gap, and so they'll trade for something else. Um, that's a good way of doing it because a you don't have to continuously buy candy, uh, and uh, you know b it's very storable, right? You can get everything in a very small uh, part of the area. 
Um, so that's another version of, of what you can do, right? Um, so you know, trade games are you know incredibly popular, right? And you can throw other things too, right? I mean, you could do you know, small small candies, toys, uh, whatever. Um, you could even right just go ahead and, and you know put slips of paper and say this represents this or that. Although that starts to you know, it, it, it diminishes the excitement, right? Candy is exciting. The gift cards work pretty well actually because they get pretty excited about it. Particularly, you don't tell them they're charged, <laughs> you know, or not charged, right? You know, they think of charge or something. He usually waits to the end. He says, they're not charged. Hand them back. And, you know, and, um, OK. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's a thought. You, before you do the thing, you turn off the air conditioner, and you put one of those little handheld fans in one of the bags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That will, and, well, and I should also mention this. I haven't done this in a while, um, but what I do is, um, I put, uh, I usually have Cuba sometimes, uh, in, and then I put in Cuba, I put a unique product, and I add a restriction. I say, well, Cuba products cannot be, you know, traded for by the United States, right? And then after the game is over and I do all the things, then I, I do check. And on a couple of occasions, I have caught the U.S. with contraband, uh, and so they, they love that, right? So you can talk, you can talk about embargoes and things just like that as well if you really wanted to. Um, so, yeah, it, it can be a lot of fun. Um, any final questions? <coughs> okay. Yeah, one last thing. Just sure. curious to see what your thoughts are. When you, I, yeah, I've got very large classes. Sure. 35 students. Yeah. Um, It'll be loud. It's going to dip out, which I'm not, that doesn't bother me. But, okay. you know, when you're sitting up at, with, with the regular traditional desk, obviously put them in a circle. But what kind of, what kind of, how many per continent do you want to put, so to speak, so that you Kind of move through the game, get oh. all the study points. Well, just I mean, logistics, just a logistical. Well, for, for logistics, I mean, so you know, so usually I have you know, so thirty six, right? And then that would be I usually have three bags per country, no more than that. Um, so that means you have uh, twelve countries, gotcha. and then the twelve countries I would go ahead and put in three continents, <coughs> and have four countries in three continents and three countries in each continent. Um, the, the key with the logistics is to do what exactly I did, is try to put everybody in the same geographical area. So I handed out the you know, Germany and Belgium and France all in one area, and I tried to keep the you know, North Americans in another area. So just be careful when you're handing out, because you're right, and tell the kids too so that they're not, you know, in the early rounds, not wandering all over the classroom. Right. Just let them know your, your, your continent is close to you, your countries are close to you. And then also I noticed, in the, and this is another instruction, uh, a lot of you abandon your bags, and I've never had to do that instruction before, but tell the students to keep their bags with them because that identifies their country. Because some of you were going around and you had to ask, well, what's your country, right? So, you know, keep your bags with you. Um, so, yeah, that's an, another instruction that you might want to give. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Now, this game, right, only represents one aspect or one game from trade. By the way, I front-ended the, the, the games. We're going to do a lot of games at sort of the beginning here, uh, trying to work up your appetite for, for the dinner. Um, uh, so this game is because, well, everybody, when you traded, it's because you got something that was different. Right? You got to consume something that was different. Right? I had this, and, and by trading it, actually, I could get different types of things. But there's other aspects for trade. We know that trade is much more involved. Okay? So for this next demonstration, okay, we are it's going to be a little bit more involved. Okay? Um, and I'm going to need, okay, so now we're going to have to drive, uh, divide us into groups of, to five different groups, okay? So it looks like we're gonna have to do twos and threes. So there's one group, <laughs> there's another group. Um, let's see, um, let's see, let's have you two be a group. And I ask you to move over here and be a group here. And then a group of two here, okay. And I'm on purpose not giving you a lot of instructions with this game. So, so we're going to use one blank. Do we still need the candy? Oh, no. The, oh, oh by, by all means, yes. You are, you are free to eat the candy now. Yeah, we're done with the candy. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
So I'm going to put an envelope in the middle of your desk, but don't open it quite yet. Okay, so that's your envelope. Here's your envelope. Here's your envelope. Here's your envelope. And here is your envelope. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do is open your envelope, and in your envelope you'll see this sheet of paper. It says student instructions for their nations. Oh yeah. So just go ahead and it. it should be on the you know, sort of towards the top. Now remember what the theme of our workshop is here, guys. You're having fun now. I can see it. Well, no, we're having fun, but it's other things. Well, don't ask me. Ask them. Okay, so we're still got one. You're a lot of fun. What's your What's the 
Guys don't have any education. You need yeah, education. Yeah, one white sheep. One white sheep and one salmon. There we go. All right, so this is going to be for our uh, uh, shelter. Yeah, now we're going to have one shelter for, but they're about an inch. It's supposed to be about an inch. So, yeah. Well, this would just be one inch wide. Alright, let's, let's, let's produce what we can do. I'll trade square. Does anyone have a yellow one to trade? Can we write on the instructions? Can we write on the instructions? Oh, yeah, yeah.
So we just we just stole it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go overboard on it. Make it happen. So four inches. Even being protected of the stable block. So four inches, so it doesn't matter. Do the same thing. Because they're both four inches. See, four inches. And four inches, so it doesn't. Uh, you guys have scotch tape here? Anybody get scotch tape? <laughs> Yeah, one more minute left. There you go. Oh, sorry. Oh, we have a dog. I'm sorry. Um, Give me a seat of it. Full length. Okay, 15 seconds. So what do we do? Okay, time is up. Time is up. Go ahead and stop your production. Let's see how far we got in our 10 minutes of time. Okay, so what I'd like each country to do is I call out their uh, the food, clothing, shelter, show me what you have. So food is make four strips of gold paper, three inches by one inch. Put them up, just hold them up, let's see. Say again? Uh, the food, so make four strips of paper, three inches. Yeah, let's take a look here. Can I borrow the ruler? Okay. And let's see. Uh, that's pretty good. I, well, of course, you had the ruler, so you, you undoubtedly were able to do it. Uh, yours are a little tall. Uh oh. We're moving the ruler around. Ours is fine. Let's see. Uh, yours are a little short. Okay. Uh, you didn't have any. No. You had no food. No. You starved. But your, 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 your country starved. Yeah. yeah, I know. But you could have traded. Yeah. But you we might have energy. Yeah. Oh. And let's see. Yeah. But <laughs> is, is, is that a, well, I guess it's a strip. Three, well, it's three by one, but that's not really. Okay. Yeah, that's not <laughs> cool. something. Okay. So. What, what is that supposed to represent, by the way? These do have representations. What is that supposed to represent? Yeah, food. Yeah, no, but what, what specifically? Yeah, the to produce gold and wheat. wheat, I think is right. I think gold and wheat would be what I think. Some of these I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So wheat, right? Yeah, so wheat, gold and wheat. Um, clothing, make a green tea, uh, four inches high. Okay, we did this. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> okay, 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 guys. Okay, of course. Well, first, okay, first of all, what is this supposed to represent? It's a T-shirt. It looks like you have like gargantuan arms here. It's like, um, but okay. Um, yeah, it looks like it's. Uh, I don't. I. I guess it is four inches high. So you got that right. But boy, those those arms are pretty big. Okay. Yeah. That arms here. I'm good. Okay. Here we go. Ah, oh, there's. This looks like. Uh, you know. And they have the ruler, so you know they they they, they made. Ball
multiple ones, of course. Okay. Did you manage to make a T? We, we made a T, but I still don't see nothing that says T shirt. <laughs> no, no, it's supposed to represent, though. It's supposed to represent. Uh, and it looks like you're a little short uh, on the T shirt. But, and that is the wrong color. You can't tell me that's green. Is that green? I guess I'm not on it. I'm colorblind. I'm colorblind. I think that's what they're looking for. I'm colorblind. That's a t-shirt. Oh, you're colorblind. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, shelter. Uh, can I see a white square and a salmon uh, triangle? White square. Okay. And how, how are you supposed to put them together to make shelter? There we go. That looks like a shelter. Is it two inches a square? That looks like two inches. Okay, that looks like what a heck of a roof you have there. That's a huge roof. That's a huge roof. We like a lot of people living on the roof. And, 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 and they ripped up the instructions. <laughs> I did say anything. Next time I say anything within the packet, I guess is what I had. I also saw an illicit ruler come out as well. I don't see nothing gets by me, guys. Don't don't try to. Now that's a small roof, but it looks like two inches. And over here, yeah, big roof with their. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is a Miami roof. We don't want to get a hard off in a hurricane. A five-ring paper chain <laughs> is equally a different color. No industry. Oh, right here, right here. What is it? Girl link. Oh, it, it's linked. But it's linked. They're linked. We tried. You, you didn't say it's the linked. That, that means hey, you said linked. Did somebody just say this was impressive? Hey, you said uh, linked. You said yeah. how? Unfortunately, I don't see anybody with anything better, so I guess we'll have to commend you for that. We tried. Yeah, you tried. No, any any links here? Well, we got all of our stuff. We just couldn't figure out a way to connect it. I guess. You oh, hold it now, guys. Like a, like hold a, it. He said they couldn't figure out a way to connect it. Uh, paper clips. Paper clips. You guys got paper clips? You didn't come to yeah, that we'll around and see Or or there, there was glue sticks. Okay, that's the hardest one. Uh, usually, most of the time I see the paper clips being used for that. I mean, but, but sometimes they do. Uh, education. Now yeah, well, I see your four-page book on two colors. Oh, uh, four-page book, two colors. That looks great. Four-page book, two colors. Yeah, four-page book, two colors. Easy. Uh, right here. <laughs> right here. Where's your four-page book? No, well, you have two colors. Okay. Uh, right here. Right here. We got. We got. We got. Oh, I. Uh, okay. Well, they. Uh, okay. I think they had intended. Where's the nicest book? This book was pretty nice. I think they. Had, I think they intended something like this, but okay. Yeah. We tried. We tried. We're a small island. We gotta make it. <laughs> we tried. There's a lot of we tried over there. It's like we tried. We tried. And then, uh, okay, obviously we know what the book represents. Um, in industry, it just represents putting things together. I mean, in, in, so a, a, a chain, maybe, um, for industry. Um, energy, one blue, five-inch square. Right. Four. Okay. Uh, five-inch? That's too small. Oh, that's too small. Uh, five-inch. Five-inch, okay, good. Uh, Look at this, guys. See, this is the first time I saw somebody make use of the markers, right? If you don't have blue paper, you have a blue marker, you have a blue square. Oh. That's awesome. Good try. Good try. Good try. We tried. Yeah, okay, yeah, we tried. We tried. We tried. We tried. We tried. We tried. Making it color. Better color. Over here. Uh, we didn't have any blue. Yeah, you know we did. We need too many T's. We were worried. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We wanted we to in the street. <laughs> so this is another version of, of the trade game. Um, the instructions are the following. It's a short, easy thing. Divide your class into five nations. Give each nation a packet of materials. Tell each nation, say, have 10 minutes to satisfy all the categories listed in uh, below, or above, I guess, above actually there. Um, uh, give no other instructions. Once <coughs> discovered, they need to 
trade and establish their own terms of trade. So you're supposed to sort of leave them in the dark a little bit. Um, I think you sometimes have to give them a little nudge, right? Uh, but once they get the idea, uh, you know, usually, you know, they, they really get engaged with this game. This game is different than the previous trade game in what ways? You've got to create, you okay. produce. It's, it, 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 it's production now, right? So you have the elk of production making things, yep. You need to know the standards and measures. Standards and measures and different qualities. So you won't be able to trade for the same value. Okay, and so yeah, and things different values and okay, yep. Uh, okay, anything else? Yeah. You have to look at your your country's resources for practical production and uh, compare with other countries and import those resources that you that you lack. Okay, so everybody had different resources, right? You had to sort of take a survey and see if then you could trade your resources for their resources. Did anybody trade, did you trade resources? Did anybody trade resources? You traded resources. Did anybody <coughs> trade final goods? Because I don't know, sometimes it happens, sometimes not. But they had multiple t-shirts. Did anybody trade one of their uh, completed uh, t-shirts or anything? Okay, once again, different games, kids will come up with different solutions, okay? How about in terms of production techniques? Specialization. Specialization, right? Certain countries could specialize in what they have, right? In terms well, of the first thing I was looking at to see what we can well, produce. The capital you have. Yeah. yeah. What can we do that will then help in the world market? What can we accomplish? Um, were there different production methods? Yes. Of course. Oh yeah. I mean, because <laughs> yeah. What what I like about this game, let's let's have that fine square again, is that there's a lot of different ways <laughs> to achieve the same thing, right? Some of you have blue paper, fine. Some of you have white paper and blue markers, fine. Some of you probably could combine the yellow marker and kind of maybe go over a blue paper and kind right. of would come up with a little with green. With that body. Uh, yeah, with a little to different make color. It green. Yeah, to kind of make it green or something. Um, some of you who didn't have scissors, what'd you do? Use the ruler. Yeah, use the ruler as, as a straight edge. Somebody, That's some okay. people. I started. Let's give your industry, your industry again. The, the, the industry, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. That, it, it's a quality thing, right? Um, but, yes, yeah, so, I mean, they didn't have scissors. They didn't have a straight edge, so they just went ahead and just ripped it to shreds, right? That, that works as, as, as well. Um, so there's a lot of different production methods that, that could be, be done. So I like this game because it talks more about production and resources and intermediate goods, right? So you could have made like strips and traded your strips. Um, and it talks about creativity, right? I mean, because all of you had to come up with different interpretations of what they were going for, right? And there were some variations there were on no it. Rules. There were no rules, right? Other than, you know, we did try to measure the size of the things to, to see if they conform to the, the standard. Um, so this game adds a little bit more <laughs> to sort of this idea of trade. I kind of almost like it, the, the grab bag with the candy, let's say kids like that one, you know, that game a lot. Um, but this one I think is a much more creative game in terms of all the dimensions of trade. Yeah. I, I, when I see the whole thing played out, I just keep thinking about Japan. It, you know, like once I see what's, what's out there yep. in the world, I want to just go take everybody's ruler and glue stick that I needed. <laughs> Oh, well, no, you can't, uh, yeah. well, that's the thing, it's like, um, you know, we have a system of trade, right, so that hopefully we don't feel like those things, oh, no, but kids, oh, you know, I have, I have no doubts that, uh, you know, when you play this game at some point in time, and you, over, over the day, and if you repeat it with your different classes and stuff, somebody's going to swipe a ruler, or somebody's going to swipe a glue stick, where's our glue stick, you know, uh, and, and, you know so you are going to have some surreptitious kind of things going on. Um, okay, any other last comments on this? Okay. Um, so with that, let's, uh, let's talk then a little bit more about uh, trade. And we'll come up with this. We don't need this anymore? No. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit uh, about the history of trade um, and a little bit about the WTO, right? This is how we get into sort of the uh, uh, sort of uh, introduction into things. And oh, I have this right here. Not yet. Uh, okay. I'm going 
going to, okay, ignore this next slide. Uh, e kind of people, we can talk about this later if you want. Um, but we'll, we'll skip to this. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about trade history. And I gave Anna the PowerPoint so she'll be able to get them to you, you know, if you're interested. Um, I tried to put the sources uh, as best I can uh, so that you can find these uh, same things uh, should, you, should you want. Um, and so let's look here. I, uh, so. Um, First of all, uh, if you want a little podcast on the history of tariffs, um, we won't listen to it right now, um, but NPR it did have a, a nice uh, sort of a, a summary of sort of uh, the history of, of tariffs. Uh, and uh, here is from the Pew Research Center, a graph, right? And it tells us uh, the history of, of, of U.S. tariffs from about 1830 uh, to 2017. Okay, and what are your thoughts and comments about that? What, what is the top of the Say what? The, the gold line on top of it. So, oh, sorry. Uh, so, um, this is duties as a share of the total value of either all imports or dutable imports, oh, in other words, the ones that they're actually charged. The uh, all imports, the ones that, that <coughs> the ones that would be free traded, and the dutable imports would be just the average over the ones that there was actually a, a, a duty charge. So this one is going to, the, the gold line is by definition going to be higher because uh, it, it doesn't include zeros, if you know what I mean. Because, you know, some, you know, some, some economists would say it's, you know, we don't want to, we want to know the average tariff of everything that was charged a tariff, not just over everything included things that had no tariffs. It's, it's just a different way of measuring it. But it doesn't really change the story overall. Um, what's happened to uh, tariffs over the long run? Yeah, yeah it's decreased. Um, and by a lot, right? I mean, you know, tariffs were 40, 50 percent. Uh, now it looks like you know, one percent overall, five percent on things that are, are on average that actually have tariffs. So the fact of the matter is, is that trade <coughs> certainly has become more freer uh, than it has in the past. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a historian. Anybody here history, folks? Yeah. Um, What's, what's your thoughts? Why, why, why is that? I think, uh, especially the Dutch Revolution, technology, uh, and settling world wars, countries number one, because of technology, <coughs> the United States can produce much, much more and have a surplus to trade. Number two, other countries adopting technology might learn also the value of trade. And number three, I think after the World War One and World War Two, countries have realized that in order to, to facilitate greater trade, which helps them economically, they need to be they play nice with each other, including reducing tariffs. Yeah, I mean, trade is about cooperation, right? I mean, and, and, and that that is is important, and that certainly happened after World War Two. Um, I'm also wondering though about a funding source, and that's also what I'm asking. Yeah. Is that in in the early days, the federal government didn't have a whole lot of money. Yeah, and so we have the income tax, what was that, about 19, 16. 14, 17, somewhere around there? Okay, so suddenly we, we have another source of, of revenue, so we don't necessarily have to turn to tariffs. So so that also crosses my mind is, is one of the reasons why, you know, they're you know, a lot early on because they're really just trying to cut, you know, collect revenues. Yeah. Yeah, uh, counterpoint on what you said about um, after World War II, I think um, um, tariffs is because of protectionism. Right? And they yep. were afraid that, like, for example, when communism came into play, that maybe the communists will try to underscore the United States uh, uh, companies. And so that's why they needed to have tariffs. So just the way that uh, one country don't destroy another country, but as time went on, when we started after the Cold War, yep. then we didn't need to worry about protectionism anymore. Okay. So it is this idea of until, protection. Until yeah. Donald Trump said uh, that, hey, China's taking advantage. 
And so that's why. Oh, okay, that's at the end of the evening. We're going to get there at the yeah. end of the evening. Right where it started to think. So, okay, one more thing. But many, many things happened after World War II. There was an increased number of international organizations that were created after World War II that did not exist before. Exactly. Among them, you know, later on, there, there was a warfare organization. So, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so, so let's, but let's look at the ancient history here first. Um, there's a couple of things. Um, you know, the, uh, what is this, the uh, Forty uh, McCumber Act, uh, and we see a, a decrease in, uh, in, in tariffs there. Um, and we see the smooth hauling tariffs. So we <coughs> go from, you know, uh, decreasing, and then what? We had the Great Depression, and suddenly we revert to protectionism. And of course, we know that's not necessarily a great thing uh, you know, to encourage growth uh, at the time, but we had the smooth holiday tariffs, uh, and you can see that huge increase. Uh, and you're right, right? We had the beginning of GAT, and at the, you know, the beginning of GAT, we, we did have this decrease uh, in, in, in tariffs, because GAT is particularly in the early rounds, really did work uh, to reduce the, uh, the amount of, of, of tariffs. So um, let's talk a little bit about GAT, because GATT was uh, an organization that uh, really did work to decrease tariff rates. And uh, it started in 1947, uh, Geneva, with uh, 23 uh, countries. And uh, this information I, I just I swiped right from the GATT website. Um, and uh, each round, right, uh, they worked on tariffs, 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 right? And so we can see by our, our picture that we can see that yeah, I mean, GATT was very effective in reducing those quantities uh, or the, uh, the amount of those tariffs through each of those trade rounds. Uh, you could also see that it started out with uh, very few countries, but as time went by, right, they went ahead and, 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 and more and more countries uh, entered the GATT agreement. And so by the time 1994 uh, went around, uh, came around, there were 123 countries. But also the the you know, the, the scope of GATT increased. It started out looking at tariffs, but then we talked, then they started looking at tariffs, and then things like anti-dumping measures. Dumping is when a country uh, sells uh, their products to another country at, at what is below cost, right? Uh, they're, they're dumping low cost uh, the things into a country, uh, damaging the country's industry. Well, we're, we're gonna talk about it, don't worry, we're gonna talk about all that, that that's later. But, um, but then they increase things like non-tariff barriers. Um, non-tariff barriers are things, oh, my, my favorite was um, Germany often tried to fight off beer imports, okay, citing that they had this beer purity law that was back in from the 1680s and that no other country's beer could meet the quality and standards of the German beer. Um, that's an example of a non-tariff uh, uh, measure designed to keep out non-German beer, right? Uh, and so uh, that's a, a famous example. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, by here, the results include one-third cotton customs duties run in the nine major countries, bringing the average tariff on industrialized products down to about 4.7 uh, by that time. So uh, it really had this, this effect. And in the last... Uh, round, uh, they had tariffs, non-tariff barriers, services, right, so trade and services we know is becoming more and more important, and so then you have to have, you know, uh, uh, regulations guiding the trade and services. Um, dispute settlement is important, right, when, when countries <laughs> bicker with each other over trade, right, I mean, the United States undoubtedly has launched, you know, complaints with the WTO on a lot of these issues, and other countries have also done that. There is a mechanism to resolve these disputes in, within the, uh, sorry, within that, which then, uh, uh, agriculture, um, and then lastly, uh, you know, GATT got rid of itself and created the WTO in 1994. And so since 1994, we've had this organization called the WTO, and the WTO uh, is now sort of the frame is, is the framework for most countries. So came into existence in uh, 1995, then got in 94, 95, and WTO starts. Um, I guess once again, uh, you know, its successor to the you know, it's uh, it's most trade body, and once again, this is you know I always like to go with what they say because uh, that's their examples. 
Um, they administer you know, trade agreements um, so that they are signed by the WTO and, the subsequent, uh, and all the subsequent or uh, preceding GATT agreements. Um, acting as a format for trade negotiations. So uh, they continue, you know, they work slowly now, uh, you know, and, and people say, why is it so slow? The, the fact of the matter is, is that you have to think, all the low-hanging fruit has already been done, right? Tariffs are all really, really pretty low on most goods, right? Um, and so, uh, in trade and services, they, they made large changes. So now they're getting to more difficult issues, such as trade-related aspects of international property, right? Uh, and so, uh, that's an important issue, but those are hard issues to, to regulate. Um, and they go ahead, they settle trade disputes, they review national trade policies, um, they assist developing countries, uh, and they cooperate with other in international organizations as well. Uh, so that's what the WTO does. Their basic principles are the following, right? Trade without discrimination. So they have this uh, concept of most favored nation uh, status. So that, what that means is that if you're in the, the WTO, right, and then you, you, you get what is called most favored nation status, in other words, all people with this most favored nation status are traded equally. So a country doesn't have different tariffs for different countries. They negotiate a common tariff for all countries who enjoy this most favored nation status. Right? So all members of the WTO receive the same tariff schedule for a country. So the U.S. has, and I'm going to show you that because it's easy to understand if you see the, the <coughs> Also, national treatment, treating poorers and, equal, uh, and, uh, and uh, locals equally. In other words, if you ship your good to Australia, your U.S. good, that, yeah, I suppose it's a, let's go with the widget, right? Uh, the, the, the widget that, uh, and you ship your widget to Australia that your U.S. widget is treated the same as any Australian-created widget in terms of regulations or policies or standards, that they can't say, oh, U.S. widgets have to be safer or have to be screened more. They have to have that same treatment as the Australian things. So it's all about non-discrimination, that everybody's treated equally. And the power of this is, is that when you know, you negotiate a lower tariff rate for one country, you know, it's applied to all the WTO countries. And so that's been a powerful bargaining thing, and it makes it easy in some sense to bargain. Instead of having to bargain with hundreds of countries, you just bargain within this uh, WTO thing. Um, so yes, freer trade gradually through uh, negotiation. How does, that, how does that jive with, you know, things like NAFTA and the USMC? We'll, we'll and all, see it. Okay. We'll see it. We'll see it. Um, so, uh, predictability, promoting fair trade, and encouraging you know, development reform, that's their, their main goals. But, you know, this is sort of the important thing. So for me, the easiest thing to understand it uh, is, uh, okay, um, oh, and I should mention, developing countries do receive special treatment uh, within uh, the WTO. There are special tariff rates that are applied to them because the idea is that you're supposed to be helping them develop. <coughs> so there's special tariff schedules. So one of the easiest way to understand this is, well, let's look at, I mean, you're going to say, well, we're going to look at the, the harmonized tariff schedule for the United States. You're saying, really? We're going to look at the harmonized tariff schedule? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and there it is. And so here it is. And, and it, it sort of shows you um, how things are simplified here, right? So here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to look at vehicles specially designed for traveling on snow, golf carts, and other similar articles. And specifically, let's just look at vehicles specifically designed for traveling on snow. Snowmobiles, snow machines, that kind of thing. Okay. So you can see rates of duty. Okay, quantity. How is it applied by the, the number? Okay. Um, and then you see column one. Column two. Column two are people who are not in the WTO. And you can see <coughs> that if you are not in the WTO and you try to import a uh, snowmobile into the United States, the rate of tariff will be 10%. So that's everybody outside the WTO. Okay. Um, if you are in the WTO, you're in column one, and you 
have two categories. This is the general category for most countries, right? And so a typical country, you can see instead of paying 10%, we'll pay 2.5%. Once again, that's not a particularly high tariff. And, and if you go down through all the tariffs, what you realize quickly is that tariffs really aren't that high, you know, for the United States and actually for most other countries, right? A lot of other countries. Um, you do notice here the special, right? And so when you say, what about NAFTA? <coughs> what about other trade agreements? What about developing countries? This is where the exceptions are made. Now, the exceptions are made only for free trade areas, right? The, 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 the tre you know, it has to be free, okay? So that's the, the, the concept anyway within these things. And you can see, well, free for who? Who are, who are getting these special deals? You see A+. Plus. A plus is a symbol for developing countries. So they have an A plus schedule and that would list all the developing countries that fall within that thing. They also have A stars and I, I you know, they, but those are developed countries. Um, now we're gonna test, uh, test your geography and see if you can guess. And what you'll be surprised to know is you say, oh, we have free trade agreements with that country. Oh, we do. Um, so I don't know all of these. First of all, I will say not all of these. But I do know AU, that is. So what? It is Australia. So there is a, there's an agreement with Australia. BH. Yeah. It is. Of course, how many snowmobiles are we going to be importing from them? I don't think so many. But remember, it applies for other things, right? <laughs> other things. Um, let's, let's skip down to where I know. Um, what well, JO, I think, is. Jordan. Yeah, it's Jordan. There's agreement with them. Um, MX. Mexico. Mexico, and there would have to be CA for Canada, um, and the rest, yeah, I, I, would, I would have to look up. Oh yeah, there's a Chilean agreement, so if there's CH, is there CH? Uh, CL. CL, yeah, that, that probably is Chile, because okay. I think there's a little yeah. confused here. So the country that's mentioned, for example, if, if in the category is, snow, you said snowmobiles? Snowmobiles, yes. Okay. So that, if those countries, that, if they happen to be producing snowmobiles and send them to the United States, United States, they would be charged 2.5. No, tax. these countries free. here would be free. free. Oh, okay. Free. 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 And a 2.5? Would be anybody not <coughs> <in> that, <country. coughs> okay. that who are members of WTO. This is the non-members of WTO. So, okay, so there's a free and a 10% and a 2.5. Right. This is non-WTO members. Right. This is WTO members who are just sort of general, and this is the special agreements, developing countries and then free trade. You want them to encourage them to have industries and you give them a, uh, give them a break, correct? You gave them yeah. a break for whatever reason, yeah. So yeah, I don't think Jordan will produce snowmobiles, they could. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, and you have to remember, I mean, it's free for vast majority of the goods. They just repeat it, you know, I mean, it's a full catalog of everything. I just pick snowmobiles. And why did I pick snowmobiles? I went page down, page down, page down. I said snowmobiles, that's good. So let's, let's say, for example, if it's Sweden. Yes. Right? Sweden is a... Is Sweden a is not in any of these, right. I don't believe. So, so Sweden, 2 so C will be 2.5. Right. Because so Sweden, Sweden is in the WTO, yeah. yeah. In fact, you, you, you'd be, I'd be hard pressed to name a country outside. Oh, North Korea. They're not in the WTO. North Korea, snowmobiles will be paid, charge 10%. Who else? Is that going to be a monthly? Like I said, I'd be hard pressed to, to name any outside. Most of the people um, are members. Uh, it's 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 yeah, 100 and some, uh, 162 or US. something. Yeah. So North uh, North Korea is now. The Vatican. What? The Vatican, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't think they care though. It's like yeah. Um, okay. Um, so you know what is covered within the WTO? Um, you have goods, services. Intellectual property, the basic principles are the basic GATT agreements for, you know, the GATT still applies, it was just sort of wrapped into the WTO. Uh, services, uh, the agreement is called the GATT's agreement, and then you have TRIPS for uh, intellectual property. And there are rules about intellectual property as well, um, and so those are important. And there's also disputes, settlements, and trade policy reviews that occur within the WTO as well. So, um, people talk about trade-related uh, aspects of intellectual property. Um, and so, what kind of things are discussed in these? Well, 
it's important that countries respect each other's intellectual property. Uh, that is the, the root of the dispute with China right now, is that Chinese companies are, well, stealing, oh, yeah, 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 secrets, uh, copyrights, patents, uh, intellectual <coughs> property. Um, sometimes it's out and out stealing, but not always. Um, a lot of it is that it's felt that to do business in China, and if you want to make an agreement with the Chinese company, that the requirements are always that you share your technology with that company. So <coughs> uh, my wife is, I'm, I'm yeah, I was trained as a trade economist, but uh, you know, I've, I've directed into economic education. But my wife does uh, international trade and she keeps up on it. And, 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 and her mantra is still, though, it's like, but we always have to remember the U.S. companies still voluntarily agree to do business with the, the Chinese company knowing that they are signing away that intellectual property. Well, that's, that's precisely what the Chinese are arguing. Yeah, that's precisely. And so that, that is something you at least have to keep in mind, right? Now, people, are, are, you know, people would say it's unfair because it, it becomes almost, it is a requirement. It isn't like you can say, I would like to engage in doing business with the Chinese company, but not share my technology. Then they just say, sorry, no, no, no deal. And so it's it's that you know it's the forcing that as a requirement to do business you have to share your technology and that does bother people right in terms of you know the Chinese yeah but I, at the same token if I'm manufacturing something in, in China and I want to produce in a certain way in, in a way you kind of force physically you're forced to to show that technology especially if you want to make changes or improvements yes. to it yeah. that, that you can that you can actually uh, realize because of technology. Yeah, it's, 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 it's puzzling to me, but yeah, uh, it must be that there are some technologies that they're willing to share, but they ask for more than is necessary to then produce the product itself. It's all hard to manage. Um, so copyright, patents, trademarks, uh, geographic names used to identify, that's always fun, right? The geographic names. I think I, I need to go through them, right? Because, um, you know, you can't refer to what champagne has to come from wow. Fran well, France in, region of in France. a certain region in, in, in France. Otherwise, it's called what? Cattle. What? Cattle. Or or sparkling sparkling wine. Wine. Oh, the oh, cattle. Oh, cattle. Or, or sparkling wine or prosecco or things like that. Um, uh, so Scotch whiskey is, is Scotland. Bohemian Crystal is a Bohemian region with the Czech Republic. Camembert cheese is from Normandy, France. Darjeeling tea is from uh, West Bengal, India. Right? The, Fr the French are famous for that. They really brand their regions very they well. They really brand their things. Uh, Armenia, uh, you know, they, well, they don't have brandy because brandy is French. They have to have, what's the generic well, Brandy is their generic. Well, what's the brandy? Is the, uh, it's a... Um, cognac. 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 Yeah, that's right. Brandy is a generic. Cognac is the French version. And Armagnac yeah. is the other region. In, in the yeah, France. In, in the France, yeah. And, but in Armenia, you know, they would still call it cognac. <laughs> you know, but of Which course... Which is very good, by the way. Uh, what? Armenian brandy. It Armenian is. It is very good. Awesome. It's, it's good Spain stuff. also produces brandy. I actually, I've done a teacher workshop in Armenia a few times. And, <laughs> and, and, and we always come back <laughs> with our bottles of our Armenian brandy. And it's like... Uh, I should say, that, yeah. uh, so all these things are, you know, you know, been discussed and 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 and, and, and uh, rules have been passed about all these types of intellectual properties. Um, as teachers, um, it's always fun to know about resources. You know, say, well, how much trade things? Um, so uh, WTO has little fact sheets on each of the countries and their tariffs and trade patterns and stuff. You can find those here. Um, but this is something that I did not know about until just about a few months ago. Maybe you've seen this, but if you haven't seen this, this is so cool. This would be one of the coolest things. So you say, okay, trade and trade patterns, how can we get kids sort of visually engaged with these things? So this is a uh, website for MIT. It, it's in the book, it's in the Yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be printed in the book, yeah. 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 Everything that, uh, well, you'll get the PowerPoints, but also the, uh, in the, on the very first page of the table of contents, the two web <coughs> are so important, I put right up. So you're sending the uh, PowerPoint? Yeah, and yeah, Anna will send the PowerPoint. Awesome. Yeah. Um, this is by WTO, and man, 
This is really cool. Um, has anybody seen this thing before? So it allows you to create visualizations of trade. So you can say, what does New Zealand export? And it does everything to scale. So you see that um, export, it looks like they export what? Concentrated milk. Who knew, right? With butter, bovine meat, wine, cheese, sheep, goats, and other things. You can do this for any country, right? So that's New Zealand. You can go ahead and you can go down and you can go ahead and say United States. And when it's the United States, I support them. And you can see it's a it's a larger variety of, of, of products. Um, gas, integrated circuits, cars, okay? And they do it by color, right? So, you know, this is sort of the petroleum industries. These seems to be uh, uh, you know, integrated circuits and equipment. This looks like vehicles, and they have little symbols down here that uh, tell you what those things are. Take meat. Nope. Okay. And you say, oh. But you can also <coughs> create other kinds of uh, things. Um, I can you go by years? Say what? By years. Um, yes. Say, for example, in the 1950s. You, you can't. But okay, but now I'm still working on this. Okay. Um, so let's just, and, and so I <coughs> just want to play with and click on all these things because I have yet to sort of, uh, you know, so let's do um, trade partners with the United States. I don't know. I don't know what this is going to do. All I know is it's going to be cool. Um, oh, no. What does uh, the, uh, what? network? United States partner, um, all countries. No, I, I, I don't know. I want to see what we. Uh, there it is. You see what the United States trades with Armenia. What does the United States export to Armenia? Um, delivery trucks, cars, uh, turbines, and things. Um, That's pretty recent. That's really recent. And it's recent data. Um, the network. There's. I think we get a, a, like a geo map. Let's do a geo map of exporters for the United States. Okay, somehow I'm getting which countries export forces. Um, that's all. Which actually I looked up earlier. Um, I don't know how it remembers. Um, okay, but you can see that, uh, so you can look at different types of uh, you know, uh, goods and countries. Um, not surprising, the UK is the, the largest exporter of forces. They have a lot of racing. Um, the United States exports a lot as, as, as well. And I still want to try to find one other, oh, network, maybe the network map is right. We don't have horses in Alaska. Nah, you they know, that's just, they just they they that you yeah, yeah, <laughs> they know, yeah. Um, what are the export op uh, opportunities of the United Kingdom? And, uh, oh, that isn't so good. Um, let's go with just one in I think let's go with just chemical products and uh, just isolated chemicals. This one might take a little longer. It seems like this. It might, uh, it might be interesting. But uh, you can gen uh, so you, you go through these things. You can also get maps which connect different countries. So you know which countries are trading with which countries for different products. And so you can create an oil map or chemical maps or whatever. Um, depending on the complexity, it obviously takes more time. So I don't know if we'll wait for it. Um, so I recommend playing with this website, right? Uh, and then, you know, or you know, getting your kids out there and, and, and playing with the website. I mean, I think, I think they'll find things. So um, I'll give up on this because oh, it's 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 there. Okay, uh, or it's starting to it's still drawing. Up. But you can see it's starting to put connections. And each of these you know, would be connections for different countries. It would tell you you know who they're trading for, <coughs> where they're getting chemicals to, etc. Okay, so um, the WTO re re you know resource looks a little dull, right? I mean, it's just it tells about you know. <laughs> And, and that's why I really love that visual 
visualization, uh, visualization uh, thing because it is such a new way. And I'm actually, for the first time, um, I used to teach, uh, when I, I taught at, at Western Michigan University in the late uh, 1995 to, uh, from, oh my goodness, no, I'm dating myself, from 1991 to 1995. Oh, that's a long time ago. Um, but I, we just created a, uh, an international trade and monetary course uh, that I will start <coughs> in the fall for the first time in uh, 25 years or something like that. So I'm kind of excited, and then when I saw that visualizing map, I'm going to send my kids out and, and, and do some assignments with that, with that information. Um, so you can get you know, information on China. Uh, you can get information on the United States from that WTO website. What's nice is they're one-page summaries, right? So, I mean, the kids can easily sort of digest the materials uh, with that. And it tells about the tariffs and whatnot. So, in sum, you know, trade barriers, uh, such as tariffs, quotas, non-tariff barriers, have been reduced over time. We, we, we've seen that through these things. Um, you know, there have been agreements on trade and services. They continue to negotiate those. And intellectual property, even though it's the newest of the agreements, there are agreements in place to, to regulate the you know, intellectual property. Of course, that doesn't stop countries from violating it. And of course, that is the uh, nature of the dispute uh, currently with China, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. Um, OK, here. So um, I have them. What, uh, one more activity. I'm looking at it. Do we dinner now or should we have an activity first? I can do an activity. How much time do you take? Yeah, it'd probably take about 15 minutes. Well, that's fine. Okay. So we're going to have one more activity, right? Um, and this is a get out of the city. Every, every one of my activities get out of the city. No, 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 no. So we're going to go get. So this is uh, to demonstrate trade barriers, right? Um, like, by the way, I forgot to ask. So grade levels, uh, we have middle school teachers here, folks. Middle school, middle school, high school. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm happy because you know, I, you know, these trade activities that we've done so far can apply to middle and high school, right? You, uh, you can do either one of those. Um, and so for this one, oh yeah, I got the stick, uh, and I got some, of course. Um, so this is to help the students uh, understand the effects of various uh, trade barriers. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and why don't we come all, everybody come over here and uh, we'll get into this open area here. And I want six people on this side and six people on this side. You guys smell the food. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, smell the food. I'm torturing them. No touching the food. <laughs> Okay, next. Jump. 
Two trades. Next. Ready? Yep. Go. Three trades. Next. Four trades. And I think we have one more. Uh, one to do. Oh, no, that's it. Okay. I'm needless. Oh, so. Okay, okay, okay. So four trades. Eric? Did everyone uh, go? Oh, oh no, yeah, sure. You can stay on the same side. It doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, Eric, okay, let's grab the string a little bit. Yeah, we're going to pull apart. Okay. Okay, what do we think? Let's make this one a little straighter. Why not? Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Let's see how many of the four people who are, who are still, and let's see how many of the four can make it over this time. Okay, so line up again. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter now. Ready? Okay, let's see. Go ahead. Jump. That's one. Okay, we got it. Okay. One, two. Two? Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's see. Next. Three. Okay. And we have, we, uh, we had four people make it last time, right? Do what? Say what? Yeah, we did. We did. Somebody, somebody, yeah, did somebody, who was, on, who was supposedly on this side before? Somebody's moving. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, get on the side then, okay, yep. Okay, so then we're down to three. Okay, Eric, one more time. Okay, let's make it a challenge. Okay, so we went, okay. Eric, I said let's make it a challenge. Okay. okay. That's right, we got to go get the Russian steroids. Okay, you ha okay, and you have to be, it's a standing jump, no running jump, right? So, okay, the three that are remaining, let's see how many people can make this. Okay. Okay, he's going to get a rep. One, two, three. There we go. Uh, there's one, okay. One, two, three, two, okay. Oh. Represent in terms of the effort trade. Have to do the trade. Yeah. challenges. Yeah, in terms of challenges. Okay, so what? This is getting what? Further riskier. Up, apart. Okay, so actually this can describe a lot of things, but it could be as simple as what? By the way, who is the Mark US's Europe. main trade partners? China. Canada. Canada and, and Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. They're yeah. close. NAFTA, but also oh, close. Distance. So this represents distance. This right. is the physical oh, okay. barrier for trade represented by differences. Okay? Let's try another trade barrier. Okay. This one you're going to, uh, I don't know if you're going to like this a lot. Okay. Limbo is last. Limbo is last. Anna, do you oh, want to help me? I want to take a picture. No, Anna, you're going to help me. You don't need to take a picture. We have a photographer. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Anna and I are going to start. Okay. 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 We're going to start very low. Okay. okay. What we're going to do is this time, we're going to jump over. Now hold it just like this so that things, okay? Yeah. Um, we're going to start really low. Okay, start really low. Okay. And so, uh, who wants to participate first? Sure. Okay, so line up. So do we have equal numbers on sides? So line up behind uh, Miguel. And uh, so and so we have one, two, three. Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. High heels or bad knees and ankles? No, okay. So we have uh, one, two, do we have another? Are you in? Okay, you're in. Okay. So we're going to have three. Let's see how many people can uh, make this amount. Okay, go ahead. Oh, Anna, don't do that with your fingers. Oh, she won't. Two. Okay. Okay, yeah, three. Okay, good. Okay, but Anna, hold it like this, because otherwise that way they'll knock. Yeah, okay. So raise it up a little bit higher. Okay. Are we okay with that? Okay, let's see. Okay. One. Okay. Sorry. Uh, where's this two? Okay, and then the jump three, three. Okay, so good. Now, okay, if we go this high, let's see if we okay. If you don't think you make it, then just drop out. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty impressed here. Okay, all right, middle wage mid. Three. Oh, he's just stepping over it. Okay, three. Okay, let's try. Okay, this will be the last one. Let's see if we knock anybody out. One. Uh, two. All right. Well, I can't look either. Okay. And, uh, but we only had two for that last round. Okay. So we dropped out. 
So what will happen? So I've been thinking about this game. Um, so what you do is you keep raising it. What does this first represent? Yeah, what kind of trade barriers? Like tariffs, right? The higher you make your tariffs, the fewer people will be able to jump it. I've been thinking how to do this because um, whenever I play this game, it becomes dangerous with the kids, right? Because you know they're they're gonna trade. So so what I think you should do uh, is that you should time it and see how many you know each team can do in you know in, in pairs in say 30 seconds. And so when it's really low. They'll be able to jump like you can count in 30 seconds, maybe 10 trades. But even if it's high, they'll be able to make it safely, but they're going to have to prepare a little while. And so if you keep a uh, you know, time at 30 seconds, each as it gets higher, in 30 seconds they'll do less. Right. Even though it will be still safe, it will be slower. So I think that would be a good alternative because when I played this game, and we, this is one of the ones we used to do in Armenia and stuff, and you know they would be very competitive in Armenia, and you know we'd be like this, and they'd be hurling themselves <laughs> over and just slapping on the floor and thinking, oh my god. Okay, so that would be. By the way, you don't want to have people. Okay. You don't want to have two people okay. jumping from opposite directions because you're going to get two people hitting the thing at the same time. But and, and, yet, and yet, but the idea, the visualization of the trade is what is supposed yeah, to be going on here. Oh, we're not done yet, we're not done yet. Okay. Okay. So we want, okay, this will be an easy one. We're gonna start really low, guys. Okay, so I want, I want, uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, 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 go under. Okay, <laughs> we'll just let them demonstrate. I mean, so, okay, go ahead. Jump again? Yeah, just jump. One, okay, go back and do it again. All right. Go ahead. Ready? Yep. Two. Ready? Okay, uh, go back again. Ready? Three. Ready? All right. Are you ready to go? All right. No, 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 no. <laughs> So, I counted one, two, three, boom. It went up. What kind of trade barrier is that? Power. No, no tariff. It's it's a increase in bargain. It is. I counted one. Two, three, and then we raised it. It's a protected tariff. It is a quota. Uh, a certain uh, number uh, in the uh, raised uh, right. okay. That's right. The last game, which I'm only going to describe because the food is really getting to me now, <laughs> is, is a limbo game. And you would, for each kid, have a pair, and you lower it, and lower it, and lower it. And those represent standards. And I don't know why standards, but they, it's you know different rules that they have that you have to get through or under to be able to trade. And so you put it up and you you, you keep track. And the idea is to reinforce the different types of trade barriers. Particularly, I like the quota one because then the students will remember one, two, three, oh, and then it goes up and this thing comes. We'll go through right the different trade barriers a little bit, but we'll do that after our dinner. And <laughs>